scholars, doctors, gentle men, women, and non binaries. <laughs> Uh, what am I doing? Uh, here we go. Okay. I'm a bit late to the party today. I'm not even set up yet. Gentle folk. That song was crap. Who the hell made that? <laughs> okay. Actually, let me turn it down. Oops. It's down in there. <laughs> Boys, girls, and those of us who know better. <laughs> That's it. Okay, uh, let's open up the old track review stuff. Let's see who's in here. Gentle folk. All right. Got my fucking jellyfish going. Less glitchy and more happy. What the fuck? Oh fuck, I'm flaming that motherfucker. Hard drive, drive back to my friend. Cool. Yeah, nice. Sweet. Always a pleasure to have you, Red Man. Soup in the house. There'll be another stankin'. Stank and track. Oh yeah, you a Broxus? Okay. So again, Patreon people, if you want to jump the line, you gotta say that you're a patron in the title. And if you're not a patron, sign up because it's dank as fuck. Help me live. Even when I'm going through a hard time. <laughs> Shit, is it me or is the stream kind of fucked up? It's a little fucked up. Hold on, let me try and fix that. Good or is this bad? What is this? Old school. Somebody type something in the chat so I can see. box here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe move it all slightly over. I'll just make it a bit smaller. Okay, and now make this bigger. Very good. Become a motherfucking patron. Black Lives Matter stuff. Alright, we're good. We're rolling. You know, why don't you tattoo your fucking forehead? <laughs> How much does it cost? It costs about 20 bucks to send in a track for review. <laughs> Alright. Prepare this for my other screen. Okay. Oh, okay, Teddy. 
Teddy. Teddy is like the Canadian way of saying that. Teddy. Teddy. Okay. <clears throat> God damn you. God damn you and your house tracks. Okay, so I guess we should get started because it's that time of year. It's that time of year. And everybody's fucking here. Everybody's fucking here to hear the stuff that we do this tea time of year. Hold up. Okay. Shot. Quiet you. Okay. Who's ready? Teddy or Tetty? Oh shit, hold on. Look, this motherfucker's still flying around. Okay, here we go. Should I be bigger? I think I should be bigger. Look at me. Ah, I want all the attention. <laughs> okay, that seems fine. Okay. Here we go. Finek is up first. Who's Finek in the chat? Finek is uh, Peter, right? All right, here we go. Thank you. 
going for the sound clock. I don't know where Peter went. I feel like he disappeared. Okay, anyways, um, yeah, that was fucking sick. What am my feedback? I don't know if I really have any feedback for this. I think it, it's really working. Um, I think it's always, like, my feedback is almost always going to be just, like, uh, maybe a little bit more tension through these sections, but I really like the way that it develops, and I, and I, and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, that's always something to play with. Um, <clears throat> this kind of stuff is always nice for, I think, like, if, if you want to try some of the kind of rhythm stuff that, um, that, um, uh, what's his name? Sonic Junkie's always doing with his weird, like, polyrhythmic stuff. This would be a pretty cool track to try that kind of stuff on. But also, I think it really vibes this way, so I don't know if I really think that that's necessary or whatever. Oh, shit, I'm not logged in. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways. Yeah. Cool. I like that. That was good. Um, does anybody else have any thoughts about it? I think I think it went real. Banging globe. Okay. All right. Next one. This track. Red man, come on, come on, red man. Why you send me the link that doesn't work? Why would you do that to me? You betrayed me. Is he in here? Yeah, he's in there. Come on. Send me the proper link, red man. And I will play your track, red man. Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. All right, so soup is next. Soup! <laughs> Uh, that was that was proper proper um, yeah, I really like that chord progression also I feel like you're the only person that I know that can get away with like really hard panning <laughs> I really like that in your tracks it's like kind of trademark well, not trademark but you know what I mean I kind of, I guess, yeah, my thought would be like, I really like this, but I feel like it would be nice if this went somewhere, you know, like for, I mean, <clears throat> I feel like there's kind of, 
broad way of of saying like tracks that that like <clears throat> sort of like put you in a place and then you just are in that place and that's really cool and then and then there's tracks that are like more like take you on a journey and I think this one sort of more puts you in a place but I think even still with just putting you in a place like we could see some more things happen in that place like I would really be interested in hearing some like kind of glitched out but still like pretty down tempo drums like still pretty chill drums but like really nice and glitched out I think that would be pretty awesome after this section or if this section like built up a little bit and then dropped into some sort of beat section I think that would be cool I mean I get if you want to keep it ambient uh and then if you do want to keep it ambient maybe just like adding an instrument in there might be nice you, you have this like really good knack for sort of um building these really nice chord progressions and these nice interactions between the notes. And I think like adding another instrument to the mix would be a fun challenge. And also like, that would be a really nice, like second part of this, I guess. But yeah, that was fucking cool. I really feel like this matches this. It, it feels really like we're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really good idea, Gonima. Even just like random percussive sound effects through the same effects chain as the vocals would be sick. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Nice. I would be I would be careful about loops for this one, soup. I think like one of the things that's really nice about this is that it feels like it's this constantly shifting thing. And I think if you drop in a loop, it'll feel, it'll sort of, lock it in a way, lock it in in a way that maybe it won't be beneficial. That's just my instinct, but, you know, I might be wrong about that. Um, but yeah, I would, my thought would be sort of like really sparse and kind of like Gonima said, like, yeah, just random percussive effects, but like sort of organized into a vague kind of groove thing or something. I don't know. Yeah, panning the, the percussions too, it would be nice. Cool. Really nice. Okay, Ray. Ray's in the house. Soon to be Dr. Ray. <laughs>
Okay, so cool. Um, I really like that. I think that, so I guess <laughs> the, the, I want to kind of talk about this first, this like, could this be hyper glitch? Um, and then this, the or is the glitch not in the foreground enough? I think the glitch is in the foreground enough for sure. But I think to me, the uh, one of the aspects of glitch, and, I, and you know, for example, like, uh, um, uh, Man from Soul disagrees with me on this, and so and I think it's open to interpretation. But <clears throat> to me, the one of the defining factors of something that makes the, the what makes something hyper glitch is like thinking of the of the rhythm of the drums uh, in a more sort of gestural way, and and trying to get away from these like groove oriented sections. Um, <clears throat> it's about sort of like. I think like, you know, one really easy way of doing that or the the way that I like to think about that is like, you know, your first bar is your is sort of like your hook. So you have your like kick on the one and then your snare on the three or, or whatever your little hook moment is. And then after that, you just sort of like lean further into the glitch and get away from the other percussion and just try to make the rest of it like a fill. Like so the sort of like... um. I don't know if you've ever heard of gospel chops, but gospel chops is this thing of like um, church drummers like facing off in these like kind of drum battles, and and they like yeah here I'll just play a little bit. So you hear how there's like a hook and then a fill and then a hook and then a fill, hook, fill. That sort of, that idea I think is <clears throat> like the way that this is done is is basically like a setup for them to like kind of do these battles with their fills, right? And uh, <clears throat> okay, yeah, let's check out who this Aaron Spears fellow is. Um, Welcome to... Yeah, no, not at all what I was talking about. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so this idea of like you have, yeah, like a conversation, you have the call and response sort of thing going. But yeah, like that, uh, and and so that to me is sort of this like kind of foundational aspect of, in, in my mind of this kind of like idea of, of hyper glitch is that you have a little bit of the rhythm is, is sort of more steady and then you go off and, and play with the, the drums more as this, is this sort of, yeah, more gestural sort of more lead element type thing. And I think like, like, um, <clears throat> for me, it's all, it also helps a lot to try to think of all the little percussive moments as, um, tonal, like melodic moments. So, oh, okay. Yeah. I just picked the wrong song then, I guess. <laughs> um, So you hear how like the snare is, I mean, even though I think this is maybe part of the, or maybe not, but, but yeah, you're doing this like switching between the, the time signatures and stuff, but the, the snare is still sort of landing in this sort of the same place, I guess. So yeah, trying to move away from the, yeah, like I think moving the kick and snare away from the one and two is part of it, but like... Um, to me, it's about that balance of like moving back and forth between something that feels really steady and then something that's totally off and like, and all fucked up and stuff, but like within sort of a four bar section and that sort of structure repeats, like you take that first bit and play that again, maybe slightly different and then kind of break out of it. Um, that being said, like, again, you know, it's open to, yeah, break it break it more, uh, like, I wonder if I can, 
Yeah, okay, so hold on. We're going to have like a Abroxas track. So Abroxas has like kind of a different take on on um, Hyperglitch and it's, and it's still really broken. But you'll see kind of what I mean, I think, in that track. I mean, I haven't heard it yet, but you'll, I think I'm pretty sure you'll hear what I mean. But the sound design is really sick and, um, and stuff. I think the things to work on would be like, yeah, getting away from, from like, uh, making like, so, so you maybe making the, you want to shift between having an obvious pulse and the pulse being really hard to kind of pull out. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, kind of just trying to break away from the, I guess not breaking away from the grid because the way that I usually do it is everything is really tight to the grid, but like, Well, yeah, so you want, like, one, one, so if you were to try and do it in, like, a four, four, four to the floor situation, you'd want the first bit to be four to the floor, and then the rest of the the four bar section to be not four, like, not that it's not four, four, but it, that all the notes are all over the place sort of thing. Like, you're really trying to think about the, the drums as a lead instrument and not as, as this rhythmic backbone getting away from that idea of like the drums being the rhythmic backbone and in and more like they're like the melodic lead instrument yeah and drifting away from the idea of riff loop pattern yeah perfect yeah cool but that said this the sound design is great it's really nice to hear all the like shifting through the t different time signatures and i think you handled it really well the yeah the last thing i'd say is just like trying to build a little bit more tension to get into those places I feel like to me I like to think about it as like a musical reason for the next section to happen so by building some tension and then resolving it or or whatever that is a really nice like musical reason to go to the next the next place but yeah cool track really nice sound design and stuff okay so let's hear Aroxas really early whips Thank you. 
<laughs> okay, so but that wasn't what I was talking about, but <laughs> uh, sorry, I guess that was kind of confusing, um, Ray. But uh, but yeah, I feel like that, see that's why it's hard to set down any particular rules for for um, for a hyper glitch or whatever. But yeah, I'm gonna hear this again. Try doing it on different instruments like the same melody or same chords or whatever, but on different instruments. It might be easier to find a way. Mindfuck. <laughs> yeah, this is coming along really nice. Um, I like how your your take on it is sort of like just to take it slow and make it so there's lots of room between the kick and the snare, and then and then you have just as much space to fuck around as as you know if you had spread it out a different way. Um, yeah, no, I think it's coming along really well. It sounds great, and uh, yeah, I agree with Soup. I think that's the that's going to be the key is like finding a couple little moments for a little bit more of that harmony stuff. I'd really sort of take it to the next level, I think. Um, but yeah, fucking awesome. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really have much more to say about that. I think <laughs> Oh, there they are. Fuck, that's so fucking beautiful, dude. Oh, God. I can't even... Whew. Okay, I'm gonna cry a little bit. Okay. Teddy. Oh, nice.
Yeah, I think, honestly, it kind of feels like the track... Like you could just end it here. Because all of this is really nice. I don't know if it really needs to go anywhere else. Like, it makes a lot of sense the way you have it. See? Racist science. <laughs> Racist science. <laughs> Racist science. <laughs> I hate that. I fucking hate that. I actually, I, there's this one track that I made a long time ago. I love chopping up vocals and doing stuff with them, but sometimes you just get the worst little things. I, I think it was on, um... <laughs> Uh, whoa, God. I think it was on Thin Veil or something. One of the last tracks has this really awkward. I guess this one. Rest in the pandemic. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it was an earlier version of this, <laughs> of this track that like the reverse vocal sounded like it was saying something really stupid. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think that's part of the magic of working with, um, w working with chopped up vocals is like, sometimes you get these weird little snippets that sound like they're saying something completely different. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, and it, I think like you can kind of play into that like depending on where you chop it and where you kind of change it the perception of it might shift i think um some of uh blawan's older stuff is is um has like some nice examples of that in techno like scarborough harbor um <laughs> fuckers <laughs> but yeah but the track itself is fucking massive. Like, it's so good. It's such a nice place to end up. Yeah. Really, really like that. Really, really, really like that. Um, okay, so TQI sent an update. So let's check that. Oh, Connor sent an update. Uh, TQI Ooh, indistinct voices ignore this if you want to thank you <laughs> all right damn it <laughs> what happened you have to put the the if it's a private track you have to put the little letters at the end of the thing Otherwise, uh, I won't get to it. Okay, so TQI.
Okay, so wait. Alright, let me listen again. Yeah, this is really cool. <clears throat> I think, um... I think that's really nice. I think like one thing that you could play with is like, well, I don't know. I really like this idea. I, 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 I kind of, I know that you're more in this zone of like making these weekly beats, but I feel like you could, you could, you could extract, like pull this one out to be a, uh, a track. And I'd really like to hear what it sounds like as a, as a whole track. Mm. There's, I, what I was thinking about was that there's something really nice about the repetitiveness of the, like the, the kind of repeating of the pattern. And then I also think that like, and you're, you're sort of breaking out from it as well. And I wonder if like, it might, it might be nice to break out from it even more in some ways. Please go away. It might be a nice place for um for some metric modulation as well. I feel like some of that would work really well in here. Anyway, it's really cool. I'm I'm loving the sound design. Mm. I really like the way that the the rhythm is syncopated and stuff. I feel like it's really coming along. We're really cool. Nice one. Ooh. Vopa. Okay. <clears throat> From the chaos this whole year brought, a new project emerged. Here are the first four tracks, all original, unreleased works produced as part of my Indistinct Voices Over PA project. I originally planned to release them myself at the date planned, but thoughtful conversations with peers has convinced me to take more time before putting that planning to work. A few words about the project. A bit different from my previous beat-oriented works, the four tracks emerged from a compositional approach I've been developing while working for movie soundtracks and immersive projects over the past years. There's a lot to unpack, but, it's a, but a good place to start is this. I try to direct my music creation with an active narrative in mind while leaving enough space for the listening experience to fill in the blanks. I think those four tracks managed to achieve this balance all in different ways. The track titles have been translated into Arabic as an echo as to echo my personal ancestry and cultural roots in North Africa that I intend to explore further in the works from this series. Release plans. I have 
Although I have the means to release it by myself or through my label, I think having a project to release is also a great opportunity to build and reinforce bridges with potential collaborators whose work, art, direction, and values I support may be directing some audience attention in the process. Now more than ever, I think that art means community, and if my project can be a way to reinforce it, even in modest ways, whatever the outcome, I'll take the chances. Although the tracks, titles, artworks, order are definitive, they're meant to be a starting point for a long-term project and take different forms in the future audio, video, uh, video installation, physical release. Cool. That's really cool. Okay. So, uh, which one should we listen to? Should we listen to the first one? Thank you. 
Ooh. Um. Actually, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, so I'm just gonna leave it playing. <laughs> uh, hold up, I'm just gonna pause it for a sec. I just want to kind of review the first one first, and then I'm gonna go to the bathroom and I'll leave it playing. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's really, 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 really nice. Like the chords and the it's it's so like it like really puts you in a space. Like it really, really put me in a space. Like it really made me feel like. Yeah, it was very cinematic, very, really, like, made me feel like I was watching something. Um, and it makes me curious, sort of, like, what is the character, what's the character doing? Like, what are we, <laughs> you know? I had all these ideas about, sort of, like, um, watching somebody sort of explore, like, a post-apocalyptic landscape or something, or, like, a desert or something. I don't know. Yeah. I'm 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 really curious what you're going to do with the visuals and stuff too. I think that's going to be awesome. Really fucking cool. I'm going to have to log in now cuz I have to follow you. I have to. I absolutely must. I absolutely must. That would be fucking amazing. Okay, cool. So I'm going to just keep playing it. I'm going to go to the bathroom and we'll be back to track of you in a bit.
Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. That was really fucking nice. I really, really enjoyed that. And I'm looking forward to listening to the rest of it and crying myself to sleep later tonight. <laughs> okay. So I'm called Cocaine by Soup. You have the same look in your eyes. The coke look. The coke look that is. When you do cocaine, you do dirty fucking things. So, <clears throat> yeah, so I think, like, you know, based on what you said, um, I think you can make it, you're going to have to get into, get into it a little bit. Um, hold on, let me, let me record a bit of it. The same look in your eyes. The coke look. The coke look that is. When you do cocaine, you do dirty fucking things. <laughs> <laughs> So, one thing I think is, like, you're going to want to maybe expand the sound palette a little bit, um, but also, like, okay, so you've got your nice intro. So, what you can, there's, there's a couple different things that you can do. One that I would maybe recommend is, like, um... <clears throat> is like taking little snippets and using them in the goddamn fuck goddamn you uh how do you do this shit here we go i meant to put the simpler there Yeah, I think, so, like, but you know, I've, yeah, I've been having so much fun lately with these guitar sounds that I have, these Hans Zimmer guitars, and I feel like they would fit really well in this, like some, some, there's some, like, just layering some harmonics in there, could be kind of nice, um... You know, and 
and and glitching those ones out and stuff i think that would be a nice little addition or any sort of like um i'm trying to think of what else would sound good honestly like i think you could really like um where did you get those guitar samples the internet <laughs> um yeah i don't know they're called Hans Zimmer guitars. I think a friend gave them to me, actually. So, I don't know if that's legal, but... <laughs> mm. They're out there, I assume. Um, or you could just record your own little ding harmonics and stuff. Um, the other thing that might be nice is, like... Like... It, feel, it feels like what you're doing is, um, it feels like a part of what you're doing is, is like affecting the voice and maybe the, the next step would be like to take that sample of the affected voice and start like cutting it and stretching it as well, you know, so like maybe taking a bit and... <laughs> And, and you can harmonize with yourself with these guys, too. Please go the fuck away. Like, you know, maybe this is a bit... I don't know, I don't know we bring in another part of this that's stretched out and... Yeah, I, I, I quite like the, right, yeah, so you're an FL. Um, yeah, honestly, it might be, it, it, it might be worth a try just to, to, to do that part in, in, uh, in Ableton. But I, I mean, I guess it's the same, same premise, right? But just like chopping stuff up and, and pitching it up and down and stuff, um, that will and I think like it, it's a nice. It would be a nice challenge to try to get, uh, to try to get all the tonal stuff out of just what you already have here. But uh, but yeah, some some guitar harmonics and or really anything else. But I would I would stay in sample world and just like play with chopping samples and pitching them and stuff. Um, yeah, it's really, really interesting, like, <laughs> these ones are the, probably the most silly, I think, but, like, even these ones, if you were to, I don't know, maybe, uh, I don't know, yeah, maybe there's a way to, to sort of, like, I don't know. Something to sort of like build some more more uh, tonal textures and stuff. And yeah, like I think one thing that makes it fall more into the Mimi side is that like, so when you have just one note at a time, it's hard to get anything that sounds particularly sad or like emotional or anything. It's like really with the interaction between the notes that you get some some sort of emotion out of it. And I think like because it's quite, it's like pretty monophonic right now. Um, that one tone at a time thing is, is contributing to, to it not having the, the gravitas, gravitas <laughs> that you might be looking for. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I mean, that's the other thing too, is like you, there's some places I think where you put kicks where 
I'm not sure if they're I'm not sure if they're necessarily needed like like well no not yeah not to say anything about that but I, I mean like you can yeah you can make these transitions also with uh without the the kicks and and think about that interaction <coughs> gravitas um Cool. Yeah. Anyways, very, very cool. And and like I I really appreciate the the idea going into it. I've I've often had kind of sort of similar similar thoughts about like trying to get something like this to organize into somehow mold something that's kind of meany and fucked up but like organize it into something that's like really tonally beautiful and, and interesting and intricate i think i think it's a, definitely a worthy cause of of pursuing <laughs> it's, uh i'm really excited to see where that goes okay so you said that you made it public now i guess okay yeah okay so let's listen to the red man red man <laughs> Glitch cuts would go a long way. Um, I think, okay, so yeah, so let me. I think this sort of thing would perform really well in 
in uh, Greensback. And <clears throat> I made like a standalone Greenspec. I feel like I'm going to release it. I think maybe today, actually. Uh, all right, we have to like save this file or saving something. Come on. Yeah. Um been thinking about this lately of like having this as like a live thing like live control um might be an interesting I think the cool thing about it is like you can you could I feel like the cool thing about what you've created here is that since the pads are relatively stable like you can get away with really chopping around and and doing the whole thing with the pads in grain spec and I think it will it will react nicely and you'll be able to write a cohesive melody over top of it or something um so I really think that this is a, a a good this 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 might really work for you. Um <clears throat> Yeah, I just have to, to I just have to touch up the the like I'm going to kind of make a reissue of the Max for Live one cuz the the desktop one is a little bit different. I wonder if I have it kind of show it a little bit um, inspect standalone windows oh uh, oops wait why don't I have the uncompressed Maybe I do. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So, the standalone version has like. Let's just use this right. Oh, please don't crash. Nice. Okay, so. I wonder if we can drag that in there. Oh. oh, but it didn't chop it. There we go. <laughs> okay, so uh oh. Well, maybe it doesn't work. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Fuck! That fucking pisses me off. <laughs> Why the fuck doesn't this work?
Okay, let's just try doing this. Map this to the speed. Fuck. Okay, I don't know why it's not working. But, anyways, imagine it did. <laughs> um, oh, the uh, filter, right. Where? What's that other shit then? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking stop working. This is driving me crazy. So that works, but this doesn't. Okay, I'll need to fix that up later, but but yeah, so so um <laughs> the spectral thing still works, so and you can kind of set up your mapping to be maybe a little bit more useful for, for your current situation or whatever, and then um and you can map basically anything to any of them. So maybe like grain speed. Where is it grain speed? Here it is. All oh, right, the grain part doesn't work right now. Nothing works then? Oh, here we go. Alright, whatever. Um, <clears throat> there's a max standalone. Yeah. The, the, and the max standalone is more thoroughly tested than the PC one. Um, yeah. Actually, if you sign up for Patreon, then you would already have this, because it's, it's already been released on Patreon for a while. Um, I'm just trying to kind of sort out the final details before it's done. But yeah, so <coughs> yeah, so lots of envelopes and mapping and blah blah blah, and you can move these nodes around also, which was kind of a pain in the ass on the other one. You can change the size of them by holding down Alt, um, and then you can use proximity to the to the node center to control a different uh, knob. Um, I'm gonna release it soon. Uh, I just have to figure out why the fuck it's not working here. <laughs> and then I can release it. Um, maybe let's just try rebooting it. Um, close. Quit. How do I quit this? <laughs> do I have to make my own quit thing for this? Why is this not quitting? Oh, exit. Control Q. Okay, cool. So. Oops. Let's just try it again, maybe. There we go. Right. So green. So fucking weird. And no errors. Okay. Anyways, yeah, I'll f I'll figure that out for for later. But I'm 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 hoping that it'll uh, I'll get I'll be able to get it done. Um, Ooh, alchemy, that's a nice idea. Um, yeah, let's talk about that on Discord if you want. <laughs> By the way, uh, at least on Windows, it says most of the stretch modes aren't available on standalone. Yeah, I want to fix that, because that's fucking bullshit. Like, they should all 
they should all fucking work, and I don't know what the fuck the problem is. What do you mean, like, they're not available in the menu, or what? Yeah, reviewed on YouTube. Um... And also, like... I don't know. Fuck. Okay, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with this. I, it's just like some finishing touches I have to, I have to figure out. <clears throat> but yeah, so, um, when that's ready, <laughs> you should try, uh, you should, you should try that out. I think the track is, it, you have like a solid base here. It's sort of like ready for the next couple layers and stuff. <clears throat> okay, so Jack Lion.
Um, yeah, that was really cool. I feel like the one thing I think is like, um, if it feels like it could use a little bit more of a defined, um, kind of defined narrative, sort of like something to kind of pull you through the track. Um, all right, take it easy, soups. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, something that's going to kind of help, uh, like, build some tension and sort of propel propel it along for the, <clears throat> for the journey or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what would be the best way to do that that would fit with the whole aesthetic and stuff, but I guess there's lots of ways that you could do it. I think, like, yeah, hmm. I'm not really sure. I think this is my favorite part, the first bit. it's just about like um adjusting the pitches of all the just everything that you have there trying to sh play with shifting the pitches of everything so that you get a little bit of that tonal tension um take it easy ray nice to see you um yeah i can <laughs> no doubt i can imagine <laughs> i can imagine jack jamming on a bukla <laughs> Yeah, for sure. It's cool as fuck. <laughs> you should look you should look up Bukla. <laughs> Let's look it up together. Bukla Weasel. Ah, oh, what? This doesn't even have like What? It's like the lamest Bukla. Come on, y'all. There's like way crazier buklas. Where's all this shit with the weird touch strips and shit? Here we go. Now we're talking. This is like some standard bukla shit. Some weird ass touch pads. <laughs> That's what I think of when I think of bukla. But yeah, so I don't know if you know the history of it, but like, um,. Um, Bukla and Moog were sort of rivals trying to get the, the market share for, for the most market share for synths. And, uh, Bukla was just too fucking wacky to be contained. <laughs> he was just a nut. And, uh, and that's why Moog, like, won out because they were just doing, like, boring keyboards and... Bukla was on some next level weird ass shit trying to make shit, shit that was actually new. And that's why all our fucking synths have keyboards now. <laughs> Bar Barton? Okay, let's try that. See, but he was not like the. He, he, he was like. Well, I don't think it was anti-keyboard, but, like, I think the thing that makes Bukla Bukla, in my opinion at least, I mean, this is not, you know, I'm not the official ambassador of Bukla, but the thing that I always thought was, like, the thing about Bukla was that they were, they, that they did weird shit, and that's why they weren't that successful <laughs> compared to Moog, <laughs> but that's what made them cool, in my opinion. Look at that shit. What is that shit? 
What the fuck is that? Look at that. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways. Uh, good. So, yeah. Nice work, Jack. Get yourself a bukla. Oh, we got a bunch of tracks here. Okay. Oh, uh... Maybe he sent it again or something. Ooh. Something new. Sonic Junkie. Alchemy. Oh, yeah, it's going to be good. It was a good lineup. This is the one with this too, right? Wait, did he just go and <laughs> make like a scratchy edit with it? Anyways, okay. He's gone now, so we will proceed. Who is this? May. 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 I feel like I did that in injustice by playing it so quiet. Hold on. Okay, that should be good. Get ready. Rewind. Yeah, okay, so I think, um, okay, so started this track over two years ago, found it a couple days ago, curious to have some feedback on the overall piece and maybe some advice on how to bring it forward. So I think, for me, um, God damn it. The, the main, sorry, there's somebody's fucking car alarm is going off outside. Um, the main thing would be just to maybe switch up some of the sound design for the, for the percussion. Um... I think that'd be a really, f like, interesting place to take it. And then leaning more into that thing that you had going on of, like, that sort of, like, you had this really nice gestural thing going. You feel like these, like, swaths of rhythm are just, like, getting 
splashed all over the place. Um, God damn it. Oh, someone's stealing the car, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, so I think that would be that would be a cool way to take it. And then, um, and then, like, another thing would be sort of just pulling it together so that there's like some sort of structure of like tension and release throughout the whole, the whole thing. I think, like, trying to think about what moment here is sort of the 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 focal point. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. What's sort of the focal point, and then and then and how are you going to build into that moment and, and get out of it and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's very cool. Lots of great stuff in there. I would also maybe think about adding another instrument. Maybe not the whole time, but like, it might be cool to have some stuff like that. Yeah, really cool. I like that a lot. Okay, Sonic Junkie, we'll do it. Ow! Why are you so loud? Okay, hold on. Why is this website like 10,000 times louder than SoundCloud? Okay, here we go. Okay, so um, I know you know what you're doing, so I'm there's I think I don't have a ton to say. One thing I wanted to point out was your use of these the the your use of the mutes and this one feels less um feels like it's working less well than than it usually does and I'm not really sure why that is I feel like mutes are sort of hard to 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 get them to work in a good way in my opinion like 
to get that like sort of like kind of thing um I would maybe vary instead of like maybe instead of varying or, or instead of having them like the same speed maybe vary the speed of them that might be a nice way of like like slowing them down or speeding them up or something that I think that would that would that would help make them feel a bit more alive than than now <laughs> about like making them short or long like that the silences are too short or that the silences are too I think it will be really yeah you know the other thing that's quite fun is automating the volume with the sign uh, sign LFO um, that which also might work well in this context of like like those tend to sound better when you speed them up and slow them down, but a, a big, um, like a LFO on the volume, <clears throat> with like a sine wave can, can, can be actually really nice for that sort of thing. It's a different type of sound, but it's still uh, pretty interesting. I think that might maybe work better for this tune since like what you were saying about the wash sort of feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting take. V spec, cool, okay. V spec says make the chops longer. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I think this is like the most stable groove thing that you've sent. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's working though. Um, but if you wanted to, yeah, one of the, is just like dropping one or two, or the mute. Sorry, feedback. Yeah, hundred BPM is hard, and I, I never, and I can never really make anything that I like that much in at hundred BPM. But yeah, it's cool. Sound design is cool. I would say maybe like sound design wise, might be nice to add a little bit more variation to the sound palette, but. But I think it's um I think it's really working. Yeah, like you don't always have to hit that second snare, I think. Like the big, the main impact in this one is the like. Like you can kind of miss that whole second snare, I think, sometimes. Um, if you want. I don't know what you're going. I don't know if that's what's what you're going for, though. Yeah, and then maybe. No, yeah, that's it. I think, yeah, it's fucking cool. I'm excited to hear where it goes. Okay, Jack is here.
Okay, so... The thing that this is missing is like the, like a central, like a, a focus, focus point, focal point. Like it, it feels like none of the, <clears throat> none of the elements are really sort of con commanding the center of attention. They're all sort of in different places. This is not really, really straight, bro. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. It feels like, um, feels like it uh it would be nice to have something more kind of s central to the track to like sort of guide us through the 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 world that you've made <laughs> true yeah finding that thing that's going to be the focal point is really hard <clears throat> and i feel like i almost always sort of stumble into it a little bit by chance <clears throat> it's like partially by chance and then partially it's like yeah i don't know i i remember somebody telling me that like <laughs> if you want your I can't remember. It was like some conversation about somebody saying that, like, if you a songs got to be, it was like somebody's dad or something being like, if you want a song to be good, you got to be able to whistle it. You got to your dad's got to be able to whistle it or something like that. So like that, there's like one <laughs> tune that's like obvious enough that you, you can kind of walk away with just I, I don't know. And it, which I kind of have issue, I take issue with the, that idea of like that music has to work like that. I don't, I really don't think it does, but, but it's something that kind of stuck in my head. And then, so whenever I think about like, how am I going <clears> to, <throat> how am I going to make a decision about like, um, oh, nice green spec. Yeah. Um, how am I going to make a decision about like, what's like, or what am I going to kind of put as the focal point of my track? I, I sort of try to think of something that's a little bit more stripped down and, and, and straightforward as like, okay, we've got a really kind of clear thing here that sort of like takes your attention. And I think that the focal element thing is also partially about, about mixing, like how, how loud you mix things and, and stuff will affect how, whether it's perceived sort of as the focal focal point or not. Okay. But yeah, that was cool. Nice. I like that one. Okay, we got Sonic Junkie. And I think we're done for today. I'm gonna raid um, Resonant Language, I think.
This is yeah. I really like this. I think you. I think, it, it it I think it would really help to add some something some pretty easy to understand element in the beginning bit for the listener to latch onto because it's this first bit is so alienating and like <clears throat> I think uh, without having a little bit of a a promise of having a a way into it it's it's. It's just it's 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 really uh, intense. Um, <clears throat> I I like I, I like the way that it is, but I I really feel like having some small little thing. Not you know no no like big changes or anything like that. Nothing that will like spoil the fun of the the weirdness of it. But even if it was just like some a couple really pretty chords or something in there. Um, <clears throat> or something that would just help to ease that journey along. I think it would. It would. I think it would make the track a lot stronger, personally. Um, but it is a wild ass ride, <laughs> like as it is, and uh, and I and I I would. The way I'm sort of imagining it is that like if you if you try to add something like that and then and then it does sort of take away from the weirdness of it then then I I don't know I don't think it's worth it but I don't know I feel like there's a way to add something in that beginning bit that's a little bit more inviting <clears throat> or add something in that little bit that'll make it a little bit more inviting uh and and keep the listener hanging on like pull them through this this section or at least give them like a light at the end of the tunnel sort of thing um i think it might help um but yeah it is a really fucking mind-bending track like yeah after this section i couldn't stop thinking like I don't know if it, it sounds to me like it's it's like a it's like a Rissa or a, a she, shepherd tone going down, but like the the speed feels like it's always going down. So then once it locks into a consistent groove, I just like I don't believe it. Like it's like I can't. I feel like I can't trust my ears. It's a really, really interesting psych, uh, psychedelic effect. Um, I've been trying to nail that part. In, but more I try to put it in the takes away from the weirdness. Yeah, fair enough. I think um, it's definitely worth like putting a lot of effort into into that, like what you were talking about, of like, or yeah, what I was saying about like finding a th a thing that will fit there. Because if you f find something in there, then what you'll have is like this perfect marriage of like something supremely weird but with like a little guiding light that will help guide the audience into it. I mean, you know, the other way you can do it, I like to think about it sort of as like foreshadowing. Like if you put a couple nice little notes, but then the melody ends, it's like, it, it's like this idea of building trust with your audience. I like to think about it like <clears throat> at the, every, at the beginning of every track, you you know, your audience knows, like you're uh, based on how much stuff that they've heard from you before your audience is going to trust you that the track is going to be cool. So you can do weirder and weirder stuff in your tracks and they'll, they'll come along for the ride. Right. But there's still this element of like when the track starts, if there, if you don't build a little bit of trust of like, here's a couple cool elements. So you know that I can do the cool things and that I haven't lost my mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, give it a little taste. Yeah, exactly. Just to give a little taste to be like, look, I know what I'm doing. Now I'm going to take you for a ride. And then, and yeah. And and then go for the, the thing. That's kind of a way. That's a, that's maybe a way of, of doing it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I feel you that like, 
That's hard. <laughs> Especially when you have something that's like really uniquely weird to try to figure out a way to... <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to take away from the weirdness. You just want to... You just want to help people get into the weirdness in the same way that you did. Yeah, it's true. The payoff is really... It's, yeah, it's true. The payoff is really, really big. Hmm. Yeah. Well, so maybe the intro ideas is the better way of going... Maybe the, the, the intro is the doing it with like a, just a really like appealing intro is, is the way to like build that trust. I don't know. I don't know if you lost the thing or whatever. I'm going to just type it out. I think. Maybe. Oh, um, yeah, I, I was just saying, like, I think uh, maybe because of what you were saying about trying stuff and it's and it's not really working in that way, maybe the the better idea would be to to just make an intro that comes before this stuff that's just something, just something to sort of set the scene and be like, look, I know what I'm doing and this is going to be cool, sort of wait it out, like, just like a little bit that sort of says trust me at the beginning I think that will help to establish like okay and yeah exactly hey can you you can trust me psych <laughs> yeah cool okay well that was a really nice one to finish on too that was awesome um, I think I'm going to send you over to resonant language oh resonant language is hosting me okay what about any the language. Any, yeah, okay. What about any the language? Clang. Is it any clang? Is that how it works? Oh, she's fucking offline too. God damn it! Who's online? Nobody's online. Oh wait. Oh, optics online. Okay. Is she negative or optic? Yeah, I'll write optic. Oh, right, the whistle thing. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Hold on, let me hear it, and then I'll try to whistle it. <laughs> Oops. my attempt <laughs> whistle theory <laughs> all right uh yeah let's raid optic <clears throat> they're gonna run a uh, track of that Thanks. Thanks, you guys. Have fun. Bye. And if you're still here watching the video, I finally figured out how to do this shit. <laughs>